Um, Sergio, shall I take some questions for a little while? Okay, I will do that until somebody comes and grabs at my sleeve and says, you know, it's time to let somebody else talk. Thank you. Uh, do you want to maybe come up and call on people? Because yeah, we, or, have, a, or we have a mic here. Oh, okay. I'll be, the, I'll be the Donahue. Oh, okay. So who has a question? Can you stand up and introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from. Hi, my name is. It does this work? Okay. Okay. <laughs> my name is Annabelle Guerrero. I'm uh, from Isabella Geriatric Center. Um, my question is with regards to the Medicaid Redesign Team. And as you were speaking, I kind of had ideas going in my head. I'm trying to organize them, but I, I think that what I got from it is that CHWs could really be the answer to the quality problem in terms of payment. So now we're trying to move away from this fee-for-service system, right, in which, you know, it, it doesn't make sense in many ways. But we are also requiring that many organizations transition to a managed care system which is capitated, which in some ways creates an incentive to provide the minimum amount of care so that we can make the maximum amount of profit. So when I look at the CHW's role in this type of system, I really think that they could be, in some ways, the answer to this quality uh, dilemma. And I'm sure that the Medicaid redesign team is coming up with quality incentives when they think about transitioning to a more managed care approach and capitated payment system. But um, that's just something I wanted to put out there. And maybe we can think of creative ways in which the CHWs can fill the gap in terms of providing quality yeah. care. Well, I, 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 th I think that's, you know, you're, you're right on target. And, you know, the, the trick will be whether we can create si delivery systems, and I don't mean, you know, like all of society, I mean organizations that people will turn to for their care, where it is in the financial interest of that delivery system to keep you healthy. And so that if they can, because if, if they don't keep you healthy, then you're going to be more expensive to take care of, and that will come out of the organization's hive. And that the organization will know that if they don't keep you healthy, that doesn't necessarily mean the system is going to pay them more. Uh, it means they're going to have a harder time getting to the end of the day. Um, now, we need to make sure that the way they hold their costs down is not just by saying no to the care that you need. We need to try to structure systems so that the system prospers by getting you the care you need when it is earliest and most effective and, and least costly. Um, and that, I, I, I think, is a critical point in the process uh, where CHW, not the only point, but a critical point in the process where CHWs can be extremely important. Um, whether it is someone who is, uh, you know, just at home with diabetes or asthma or whatever complicated condition or somebody who is perfectly healthy but falls down and you know, injures their leg uh, and can either get back on their feet, you know, literally uh, sooner rather than later and what kinds of care they get and how they access it, et cetera, will have a lot to do with whether that person who fell down and hurt their leg ends up uh, needing surgery or, or doesn't. Um, and community health workers can be, I think, very important to help the patient get where they need to go. And I don't mean by driving the car, but by connecting them. Although, I mean, if CHWs want to drive people to their appointments, that's okay with me. Um, 
I, I'm not trying to define the profession, um, but uh, helping helping the, the the patient access what they need, helping the various providers of the patient uh, talk to one another, and and all of those things. So, and 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 if that helps free up. Uh, you know, physicians and, and, and whatnot to do the things that uh, they are more, more specially trained to do, uh, so much the better. Uh, so yes, I think CHWs are, are critically important to any system that's going to try to live within cost constraints while also protecting the quality of care and, and outcomes. Other questions? I had not known a CHW crowd to be shy. Other questions? I have a question for you. Why does New York matter? Why is it important that this initiative, this effort is being made here at this time? Well, uh, apart from the fact that this is where we all live and work, um, and while it would be nice if it happens in Nebraska, that's nowhere near as nice for us as if it happens here. Um, but New York is uh, a huge part of the healthcare system. Uh, I mean, there are 19 million of us. And also, New York trains a whole lot of uh, physicians who, after they go to medical school, they come to hospitals in New York. Many of them go to medical school in New York. We've got more than a dozen of them. Um, and then they do their residencies in New York, and, and then a lot of them you know, go on you know, back to Nebraska or wherever they came from to practice medicine. Um, and so what we do in, you know, it's sort of the opposite of you know, Las Vegas rules. Uh, you know, what's, what happens in, in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in New York does not stay here. If we can train uh, the next generation of uh, new physicians uh, to live in a world in which they assume that they will have the help of community health workers, then when they go back to Nebraska or California or wherever, uh, they will be messengers for that, for that concept. And so what we do in New York, you know, New York was one of the first states to have uh, a child health insurance program. Uh, I mean, we copied the idea from Minnesota. I always like to give them credit um, and, and to say how thankful I am that I'm in a line of work where stealing other people's ideas is, is, uh, is applauded. Um, uh, uh, but after we grew the Child, Health, uh, the Child Health Plus program in New York for a few years and a few other states had similar programs, Congress uh, had the bright idea, thank goodness they did, uh, of saying, you know, let's uh, tell all the states that if you do a program like what New York does, because they, they modeled the legislation on what we do here in New York, we will pay you two-thirds of the money. And that, only, that not only helped create child health insurance programs now in all 50 states, even Texas finally got the word, uh, they were the last. Um, but it also enabled New York, because we were now getting two-thirds of it paid for by the federal government, it enabled New York to dramatically expand our own program. So to the extent we can advance uh, this concept, uh, it, will, it will benefit New Yorkers right away. It will benefit the rest of the country. And to the extent we can help uh, induce the federal government through Medicaid, Medicare, what have you, uh, to decide to help build uh, the profession, that will come back uh, to New York's benefit. Thank you very much. We can I add, just add, add a yes, point please. to that? In addition, I mean, all, all of those points are, are so important. Um, I, I think that New York itself is an opportunity to, to not only be innovative and create models, but then to test models. Because of your, sh your sheer size, the population, the diverse population here, um, in terms of 
racial makeup, cultural makeup, the international infusion of culture, and what we know about the work of community health workers um, work abroad and cultures here in New York, coupled with the ability to have geographical um, differences in terms of urban and rural models being looked at simultaneously so that as you develop payment systems, as you're looking at access, as you're looking at quality of care with regards to everything from outreach and the type of outreach and the needs of the population, you are able then to do some simultaneous tracking and modeling what happens even in one borough from the other borough in the populations there and the outcomes, but what happens upstate and downstate, what happens within regions is so important to be able to, th this is just all of it at once that then you are able to then have people say, then I can replicate a piece of what I need in Nebraska because there's a rural part of New York that has similar dimensions. Or I can replicate in Detroit because I've been able to do it in the Bronx. So, it, it, and the populations and, the, and the, the cultural and the age of the populations depending upon what you're targeting. So it's just such a, a, a great place of innovation because of all of the, the diversity that's here in the state. Wow, I'm gonna steal that speech. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do you have time for one more question? Good afternoon. It's more of a comment as opposed to a question. My name is Neva Schillingford. I'm one of the um, executive vice presidents from 1199. You spoke about 1199. And um, with healthcare changing, and um, in, in terms of deliverance of health care, community health workers are so critical because we're talking about delivering care in a community base, right? And so labor, and that's, that's the question that I wanted to, to raise also, is how we can enhance labor and CHW as a partnership because that is so critical and New York, could lead the way in the future of deliverance of healthcare. It is so, so important because we are all gonna be working alongside each other, doing the same work and talking about coordination of care. That's what it's all about. That's what the Affordable Care Act is all about too. So I just wanted to say that I've been working with Sergio, um, with, with, with the community health workers. I happen to represent the community-based organizations in 1199, so I know how important that is. Thank you. Thank you. And I, <laughs> and before you. And, and, and my mother's home health aides are all 1199 members. I want to just turn this into a question and make it the last question before we take our break, is how, is how can the folks in this room and the folks that couldn't be here today, and this is for Jackie as well, um, advocate for the work, the report, the recommendations, what we're talking about here today. And considering that you're one of the most important decision makers in New York, how do we do that? Well, um, organize and be actively involved in your organization, whether it's an organization of community health workers in your city or the, the state organization that is forming uh, or your union if, if, if where you work is unionized. Uh, be, be part of, when you hear that there's uh, gonna be a group that's gonna go meet with uh, you know, the, the, one of the assembly members from Rochester or, or Buffalo or wherever you're from, uh, volunteer to be part of that group uh, even if there isn't any group going to meet with their legislator, find out who your assembly member and state senator is and uh, call their office and ask if you can come and talk to them and tell them about what you do uh, and what you want and, and need. And even if you can't get a meeting with the legislator, talk to somebody on the legislator's staff. Um, you know, we, everybody in the legislature 
is a human being. Um, I, even, I even think that's in the state constitution. Um, we all need to learn. Nobody, I don't think there's anybody in the legislature who has ever been a community health worker. My guess is that out of the 212 members of the legislature, maybe three or four of us have ever heard the term community health worker. Uh, we are, I think most of us, pretty aware of the fact that there are, particularly in the healthcare area, there is a vast ocean of knowledge that we have barely dipped our toes into and are eager to know what's going out there, what's going on out there in the real world. And so I think you, you know, don't assume that your legislators know what you know, because they don't, and don't assume that they don't want to know about what you do and what matters to you, because they probably do want to know. Um, if you, you know, knock on their door and say, hey, I have something to talk to you about. Um, and so that, that's part of what I think is, uh, is really important. And also be part of organizations so that the concepts that need to be developed get developed and get developed in ways that reflect uh, what matters to you in your in your everyday life. Okay. Thank you.